Hey guys, uh, before we start tonight's devotion, uh, I wanted to give a few updates on uh, some upcoming stuff that uh, you need to know um, in the student ministry. Um, I hope you, hopefully you've seen by now uh, Pastor Evan's video about um, some of the changes that's happening. And right now the plan is to uh, tentatively start Sunday school back on June the 7th. Now, like I said, that's the plan. Things could change between now and then. Um, but that's the plan, so hopefully we can meet back up here on Sunday school, for Sunday school, um, June the 7th, that Sunday morning. Um, now, Wednesday nights, um, we're still going to be patient um, before we start back Wednesday nights because if, uh, with social distancing, it's going to be tough for all of us to maybe meet together at the same time on Wednesday nights. So we're going to try to be wise and, and we will slowly uh, integrate and start back on Wednesday nights at some point, uh, hopefully during the summer. Uh, but don't worry, uh, some events are coming where we will be able to get together and hang out and have a good time um, sometime in the summer. So be looking for that. Um, the second thing is this, uh, May 24th, uh, we'll be having our, our drive-in uh, movie night. Um, it'll be that Sunday night. And I sent an email out to the parents. And, and in, that, in that email, I said, you know, you cannot watch a movie without popcorn and drinks, without snacks and drinks. So the church is providing uh, popcorn and drinks, snacks, and we would love for you, our students, to come alongside of us and help us serve that to uh, people who are going to be here. So if you want to, if you're going to be here and if you want to serve, um, let me know, let Kara know that, that you're going to be here and that you want to help out. Now, lastly is the big one is Wired. Um, I know that Wired is a, is a big deal. It's always um, a great thing we always do every summer. Now, I do not have a final answer of what Wired is going to look like. Um, again, I emailed parents and, and gave a, a list of what of some options that could happen. Well, since then, I have some more info. Um, it's looking like it's going to be the same dates um, starting on uh, June 21st, that, that, that Sunday, um, be that, that week till Friday. And so what it's looking like, it'll be 100 bucks a person. And it's either going to be uh, just nightly worship services at the Civic Center or nightly worship services at the uh, fairgrounds. And so they're kind of waiting, we're just waiting to hear from uh, the governor on what she says about large gathering. They are kind of anticipating that um, she may say something that how we can have large gatherings on June 1st, whether it may be at the Civic Center or where it may be at the fairgrounds, we're not entirely sure. But what we do know is whether, if the event is at one of those two places, it will be 99 bucks a person, um, and that will be uh, Sunday to Friday. And so uh, if you are going, go ahead and start letting me know if you want to be a part of that. Um, now, another thing that's going to be different is they are not, I do not expect them to be uh, selling armbands. So if you were someone, uh, if your parent was, that would just come to the nightly worship and buy an armband, I do not think they're going to do that this year because of, of social distancing stuff. So if your parents want to go, they're going to have to be a part of our account. So if you're going or if your parent wants to go or family member wants to go, they need to talk to me so I can put them on our account and add them to the list so that they can uh, come along with us. Um, but again, it's going to be the same band uh, and Fair Free. It's going to be the same speaker and Pastor Eric Reed. It's going to be a good time, uh, but it's just going to look a little different. It's just going to be nightly worship services, like I said, either at the Civic Center or at the fairgrounds. And so I ask you to be, be praying for that week and be praying for, uh, for, for Mark Anderson and that group that's got to make that decision. That is some tough stuff. Uh, that they are dealing with. Um, so those are some of the updates. If you have any questions, feel free to call me, email me, um, and just get up with me and I will uh, gladly answer and help you with anything that you may uh, need help with. So with all that being said, let's dive into this, our quick devotion. Like we said, we've been talking about uh, how we have confidence during all that craziness, right? That during this pandemic, during this crazy time that's changed all our plans, that's changed all our normalcy, how can we have confidence? Um, and so we've talked about how uh, the last two weeks ago, we talked about having confidence in God. And last week, we talked about having confidence in Scripture. And last week, I talked about how they're going to piggyback off of each other. And so tonight's no different. It's going to be the same exact way as we talk about having confidence in Christ, um, having confidence in, in who Jesus is and who He says He is and, and what He did for us. And I want to tie it back again, like I said, how they all tie together, back to Isaiah 40. Remember, like I said, in Isaiah 1 verse 2, uh, last week, they, they sinned against God. And then chapters 1 through 39 was doom and gloom and despair that God allowed because of their sin. He allowed the Israelites to, to be exiled, to be overtaken by the Persians and, and the Babylonians. And he allowed them to be to live outside of their homeland. 
and until chapter 40, God gives this message to Isaiah in, in verse 1. And he says, comfort, comfort, my people says you are God. And in verses 3 through 5, we see that God promises them that he promises them a way back to their homeland. And so how do we have, how can we look at that and say we have confidence in Jesus? Now, I want to say this is that we know that, and we've studied this before, that that when Jesus came to the earth, Jesus, he left heaven. He came down to the, to the form of a baby. And when he came to live among us, he was 100% man, but he was also 100% God. That Jesus uh, is God. John, John 1 tells us that, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, that Word means Jesus. We see that Jesus is God. And so Jesus, as a man, came and dwelt among us and lived this, uh, an example of a life that we should absolutely follow. But yet, like I say every week, he lived a life that we couldn't live, a perfect holy life, so that he could die a death that we deserve, so that we, he would pay the, the price for our sin. And so ultimately, if we see that, if we have confidence in, in God and how he was God of the Old Testament to the Israelites and how he was vast and strong, like he did in Isaiah 40, and when Jesus came to be God, Jesus ultimately did the same thing that, I, that God did, that God we see in Isaiah 40. If you think about it, in, in chapter 1, he says, comfort, comfort my people, says you are God. We see Jesus, God sent Jesus to, to, to comfort us as sinners. We were just like the Israelites in Isaiah uh, 1 verse 2. We had rebelled, we had sinned against God, and we were exiled from him. We were no longer with him. Our relationship was strained. There was no relationship. We were broken. We were chasing after our own heart. We were chasing, doing our own desires until God sent Jesus, until Jesus came into this world to offer our salvation, to give us a way, like verses 3, 4, and 5. God promised a way uh, to for the Israelites to get back to their homeland. God sent Jesus. Jesus becomes that way for us now to enter into that relationship back with him. That all of us who had sinned, right? Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans 6.23, that, that the, 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 the penalty, the wage of that sin is death, that because of our sin, we deserve the wrath of God. We deserve hell. But one of the most beautiful and encouraging verses of all of Scripture, Romans 5.8, that God demonstrated his love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That while we were still in rebellion, while we were still in exile, away from his relationship, Christ still came, he still wanted us, he desired us, and he died for us so that he could comfort us, just like God comforted his people in Isaiah 40, he could comfort us with salvation and, call us and redeem us back to himself. So how can we have confidence in Jesus during all this? Is knowing that, like I said in Romans 5, 8, that while we were still messed up, while we were still exiled and separated from him, God still sent Jesus, even in our in our filth, in our sin, and our rebellion against him. He loved us so much that he, Jesus died for us anyway and redeemed us, justified us. And if we are in Christ, if we are those who are, are, are living a life, after we're in this process of sanctification, right? Of, of being made like him each and every day. And ultimately we can have faith that Christ is, is at work in our life each and every day, even during this crazy time. And not just, like I said, not every, every week I've said, not during just the pandemic time, but also when, when life gets back to normal and life's just difficult, life's just hard. I say it a lot, but in James 1, we can find joy in the fact that, that, that Christ, that God is working in our life. Uh, to make us more like him and so that even we can have confidence to know that even in this crazy time that, that, that God is in control he's so in control that he had a plan he had a redemption plan for us just like he had a redemption plan for the Israelites in Isaiah 40 he had a redemption plan for us as well to send his son to die for us and there's nothing we could do to earn that redemption there was nothing the Israelites could do to, to take back their homeland God had to provide that way for them he provided that way for us uh, through Jesus so that's how we can have confidence in him. Maybe you're someone who you don't know how to have confidence in God or confidence in Christ. Maybe you don't have a relationship with, with God. Let me, let me tell you this, that, like I said, we've all sinned. We've all messed up. But Christ came and died for you to forgive you of that sin. And if you don't have that relationship with him, if you've never accepted that forgiveness and, and given your heart to Christ and allowed him to change you, 
then I'm praying for you. And I pray that you would reach out and talk to me. Because listen, me or my wife, Carol, we're here. We'd love to talk with you. But that is ultimately how we can have confidence in Christ, is knowing that just like God prepared a way for his people in the Old Testament, he prepared a way for us to back to him in the New Testament through his son, Jesus. And God is in control and he comforted his, he comforted his the people in the Old Testament through providing for them. He comforts us through providing salvation for us even to today. So I'm praying for you guys. Uh, and I cannot wait to see you on Sunday. And I will see you then.